for sure. What's good up? morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Thursday edition of the Faith Room. I tell you, y'all have no idea the things I have to go through just to get here. <laughs> in front of y'all. Lord help her. Honey. Yes, KJ, Lord. point your hand toward the elder right now, KJ. Uh and just say this prayer with me, Lord. Touch. That's all. Short, short and sweet. Lord, touch. Do it. Do it. Touch Lord, Lord. Do it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Come on in, everybody. Sheree, it's Thursday. What's up? Hey, I, I, I'm just thankful to be alive. It's Can a you, thriving Thursday for me. Thriving Thursday, KJ. Yeah. It's a. Uh huh, KJ. Come on, KJ. KJ Come ain't got no KJ. Word. KJ, this is, for words. this is a first. Um, KJ. What is today? Today is Thursday, August 26th. Pastor KJ had no words. No words today. Sheree, it's a thankful Thursday. I'm thankful. Thankful. Somebody said, Jermaine says a turn up Thursday. Turn up Thursday. Come on, point your hand towards Jermaine right now. And no, say no, this. turn up, sis. Or whatever the turn up is. No. Deontay <laughs> says a testimony Make Thursday. <laughs> It's uh somebody said tangible Thursday, but it got away from me. All right, good deal. What's up, Brittany? Brittany Thomas in the building. Good bill. morning, Brett. What's up, Ronisha? Good morning to you. Y'all do me a favor. Uh declare your day. And then when you declare your day, do me a favor. I want you to share. I want you to share, share, tag, and share again. All right. Uh do that for Pastor Nate. This is the day that the Lord has made. And guess what, guys? We're choosing to rejoice. Absolutely. And we are choosing to be glad in it. It's all in your mind. My mind is not going to be an embalming room. It not. Yes. No, no sir. No. It's not going to be. No, no, uh, no, no, no. It's not going to be an embalming room. What was the other option? An embalming room. Birthing or, room or an embalming or room. room. My mind no. is a birthing room, faith room. Yes. And not an yes, embalming no. room. I saw yeah. Pastor Parks last night. I made sure he saw me since he wanted to put me on blast. Oh, he, he blasted you yesterday. <laughs> Do you see me? Do you see me? Yeah. Hello, well, come on in real quickly. And uh, I'm going to start like, tagging and sharing on my end. Tomiko Bauer says it's a Tomiko Thursday. Tomiko. Don't it. <laughs> Tomiko saying I'm choosing me today. Forget yes, that. I am here to listen, ready to have my cup filled. That's what's come on, up, Tomiko. Come on, Tomiko. Good morning to everybody. Lady Edwards, good morning to you. Praise him. Part of Thanksgiving Thursday. Come on, y'all. Good morning to everybody. Erosion Thursday. Trusting in the Lord Thursday. Come on, Felicia. What's going on? Felicia. I think we ought to send you this morning. Yeah, come on in, y'all. I'm tagging on my end, Elder Pastor KJ, because I've declared my day. I've mm -hmm. declared my day. No drama. No, no drama. Today. No, no stress. stress. Come on, y'all. No stress, mm. no mess, none of the above. What's up, YouTube world? Wow. Sheree, we do have a YouTube audience. They can follow yeah, us on absolutely. YouTube. In fact, I subscribe to our you. channel on yep. YouTube. I encourage you to do so. I encourage you to do so, guys. Do that for me, real quickly, y'all. There is a major teacher in the room today. Oh my God! Yeah, Maxwell Clark and. Uh, you're going to be blessed today. I want you to go ahead and tag some people and uh, get your notebook ready. Uh, every time Maxwell teaches, he blesses me and I need a notebook and uh, something to write with. So go ahead, guys, and uh, let's tag a few people in. Once we get to 200 people, uh, we're going to get started for today. Once we get to 200, we will get started for today. Sheree, how you feeling today? Y'all had revival last night, right? Y'all had Pastor Watson in last night. We did. Yeah, I did. It was great. You know, you know, the city came out to hear their own. Dr. Maurice Watson. From North Little Rock, Arkansas. He's doing great things across the country, but um, he's, he's, he's in one the, of ours. Yeah, he's in the DMV now, Dallas. No, uh, he's actually in Largo, Maryland. Maryland? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Dallas, I'm not, I said Dallas. Uh, it's the DMV, da, uh, uh, yeah. DC, Maryland, Virginia. Maryland. Mm -hmm. Come on. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. I said Dallas. You think of DFW? Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, so Thank you for not being met. Because y'all could have that's, that's made yeah. me look real bad right there, but y'all love me. Thank she you. Said, I tell you, she you always that to you. me. I don't do that. I don't do that to you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. All right, good. Come on in, everybody. I, I, I'm good. I'm good. 
That's good. I feel, I'm moving a little slow this morning. I think I did too much today. That's all good. But listen, I done took I done took some ibuprofen, and we gonna be all right. Uh, how many did you take? Seven, Five, two, nine. three. Okay, I usually do three. Yeah, before I, you know, no, they say I, take I, it before you get settled because okay. the joints and stuff won't get stuck. Those two hundred milligrams don't do it for me. I need I need a Eight. yeah. You know how it is. Baby, yeah, I trust at least them. four. Yeah, Tariq, I wanted you to mention because a lot of people. Who is that tagging eighteen hundred people? Who is that? I need to get that. She go. You think? <laughs> there it is. That's Fifi. Fifi, what's up, you? Fifi? Good to see you this morning. All right, Laura Crawford tagging some people. Good morning. Y'all, let me tell you, Sheree, we have so many testimonies, sis. And yeah. you know, we can't make this stuff up, Elder. I want you to mm -mm. I want you to just let some let, let the people know some of the things we're hearing about this platform. Okay. So Man. we are let me pull up a text. So uh one of our faith rumors um text me and Pastor Nate this morning. Yeah. Um and she says she's in a virtual workout group. And they meet at 6 30 in the morning and the trainer lives in california mm -hmm. um and so i think she introduced him to the she shared a link one time to him in, about you know the faith room and so she had no idea that this trainer had been watching us and wow. this morning in their group now normally the only videos they post in the group are workout videos but today he shared the link with the group from yesterday. I don't know if y'all can see it. Wow. From That's yesterday's episode and said a fellow um, toner re recommended this page to me and it's been awesome. The mind is the main focus of effort in the group and in wow. my life. Listen to this powerful message from yesterday when you get a moment, then let's discuss it if anyone is up for it. So it's, I mean, they creating small group discussions. From the faith. Um, wow. From the faith room. Okay, do you hear that, bro? That's a blessing. I was just wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Man. Even uh, Karen Bradley Fulton, who's in here on a regular, she's a teacher. So, you know, school has started back. And she told me last night, one of her students said, Miss Miss Karen, are you trying to get us saved? Wow. Yeah, because they hear us in the in her classroom. Wow, man. Cat, this is a blessing, man. And and we set goals as a team, man. And God, God blessed us with over 400 yesterday. Live. Over 400. We made it, y'all. Yeah, we set goals. We started 25 people on the cell phone. We prayed for 50 people. Mm -hmm. Lord, if we got 50 in, that was a blessing. Then we went to 75. Then we went, and God has just breathed on it. And and we're we're sharing the data because uh keep his name up right there for me elder uh we David. Said, we, yeah we're sharing the data because we want you to know when god is breathing on something pastor kj there's nothing you could do man but thank him man when he's breathing on it yeah. so uh y'all we're believing god listen y'all we're believing god for healing for deacon david turner he's on right now pastor kj i want you to pray we're well over 200 now i want you to pray for deacon turner everybody Will you believe in faith right now that God is touching his body right now yes. in the name of Jesus? Deke, we love you. Uh, I want everybody right now by faith. I want everybody by faith right now uh, to believe that God is healing Deacon Turner's Amen. body right now. The specifics don't really matter. God knows. God knows the specifics. But I want you. To take a moment, Pastor KJ, lift them up for healing right now. Just a short prayer of healing right now, man of God. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your word has already declared that if yes, the God. same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in us, then that same spirit shall quicken our mortal bodies. We thank yeah. you that your word has declared that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Yes, Regardless yes. of what the diagnosis or the report is, we believe your report. And yes. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that even right now, as we come together and pray on one accord for David Turner, Lord God, yes, we sir. ask, Lord God, that oh, you would send your word 
and heal him. And Lord God, even begin to astound the doctors. Lord God, even when he goes back for his next appointment, let them begin to testify what we believe even now that you are healing and you have healed. And we thank you for complete and total healing and recovery. He shall not die, but live yes, and God. declare the works you, of God. the Lord. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody who believe he's healed, will you put those hands together right now? Y'all give Deacon Turner some love right now, y'all. Come on. Right now, clap your hands. Yes, Hallelujah. we call you healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tag his family right now. Let them know that we are, we're praying for him yes. right now. Amen. Listen, God, I want to bring our guest in today. Sheree, we're over where? Where, where are we? We're at 263. 263. Guys, I want to bring our guest in right now. I want you to keep tagging some people because I believe this lesson today. Y'all, the mind, the mind, get your yes. mind together, y'all. This has been a blessing, has it not? Come on. Yeah, it has. Yes. It get has. your mind together. So on Monday, we kind of kicked it off uh, with just giving some backdrop. And then on Tuesday, George Parks, mm -hmm. thinking positive. Yes. In a negative world, in negative environments. And then on yesterday, Pastor Paul, oh my God, Pastor Paul Little talked about settling your mind. Settling your mind. Make up your mind. How many of you, you tired of being on the fence? What they call it? Wishy. Wishy washy. Washy. Uh, man, come on, guys. We have to make up our mind. We have to stand on what we believe. Yeah. And so Paul Little really helped us uh, on yesterday. But then today, guys, there's a gentleman who I was honored to to serve with in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, when I served there as executive director of ministry in uh, Cleveland, in uh, cold Cleveland, Ohio. I'll never forget Cleveland, boy. Cleveland broke me in real good. Uh, <laughs> where it snows in May and June. It'll snow oh, no. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. The Lord said, your time is up it. Yeah, your time to go. And so- <laughs> Up it, yep. I'm I'm doing the I'm I'm using the King James. Oh, King James. <laughs> you said so. I I this brother was the student pastor there, and it was an honor to help lead and serve and support his ministries. Uh, and I was so impressed with Maxwell Clark. We're talking 2013, y'all. Uh, 2014 when I met this brother, and I was so impressed with him. Uh, and then the Lord began to place on his heart to do a church plant. And he ended up moving to Houston, Texas, the Houston, Texas area. He planted a ministry there, uh, Life Point Church. And he'll tell you more about Life Point. Uh, seven years he's been the lead pastor at Life Point Church yeah. uh, there in the Houston area. And uh, man, he has been hit with so much. His church from a church plant, he was seeing upward to 300 people every weekend. Then they had two floods. Uh, and then they had, of course, Hurricane Harvey came through. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the pandemic. So his church just kind of dispersed. They scattered. Wow, wow, wow. And so he's really rebuilding. He did purchase a new building. But the brother's mind. Let me tell y'all. Y'all know I don't lie. And I don't, if, if somebody's just a good preacher, I'll say they can preach. Somebody good. But this brother can preach. And he has his biblical acumen. It, it's just, I'm just impressed with him. You're going to be impressed today. Uh, his lesson today, Sheree, mm -hmm. are you ready for this? I'm ready. His lesson today is get out your own head. Oh, hey. Your own head. Type that in, Kadrick. Y'all, come on, Cad. Get out your own head. Sheree, put that up. I get shall. Get out your own head. You ain't got no haters. You in your own head. Come on. Ooh. You in your own head. You got stuff going around in your own head. And he's going to help us transform our lives by transforming our thinking. Get How many of you ever been in your own head? I wish I had somebody today. Cat, this is for me. <laughs> Baby. This is for me. Uh, this is uh, Felicia. Uh, listen, lady, uh, lady, lady Rose, this is for me. Sheila, I needed this. Me too, Sheila. So, y'all, I want you to buckle up, and we're going to prepare today. Are you okay? I got to get a charger. Okay. It's like what the man of God talked about yesterday. Or this whole show is going to go off. 
Well, you better go grab it. All right, keep talking. All right, here you see that cat. <laughs> Y'all see this? As soon as we about to bring the guest in, here we go. Yeah. So she is. Come on, that's the wrong way to do it when, when you dress like Nino Brown today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is wrong. This is wrong. That buddy is playing with you right, Nate. <laughs> y'all hear him, man? We live. Oh, we not gonna let her live this down, y'all. Come on, Ash, get out your own head. Come on. That means I can yeah, tag a few more people. This dude said, "Nino, y'all gonna let him talk about me like that?" Nino Brown, Cherie, did what? You, did you hear this joke? I did not. I told, I told Nate this the wrong day for you to be messing up because he dressed like Nino Brown today. No <laughs> help. Listen, hold on, y'all. Miss, what's her name in the court? <laughs> Everybody didn't okay, grow up with a spoon in their mouth. Miss, <laughs> what was the lady named the attorney? I didn't watch all that. I don't know. Uh. What was the lady name, y'all, in the courtroom? On, on, I'm on, sure. Let me see. I'm Kim Pipe. Well, no. On New Jack City. Oh, <laughs> Miss Hawkins. Yeah. <laughs> Sit your two dollars. <laughs> Five big chain. Don't nobody know nothing. <laughs> that is. Hey, Miss. Haw hey, like. Hey, look, Yolanda. This was the part that got me when Nino. I gotta find some when Nino came in there. Oh God. Uh. <laughs> when Nino came in after the Carter went down, the dude at the table with the cigarette. <laughs> Don't nobody know nothing. Nothing. <laughs> A million dollar operation. Where is this show going? Okay, y'all, let's go. I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Y'all do this to me. Reel me back in. Come on, y'all. No, snatch. We ain't reeling. Somebody snatch him back. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here, here we go. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> y'all, Pastor Maxwell Clark, put your hands together, y'all, for the first time, not the last time. Pastor Maxwell Clark, come on, y'all. Houston, Texas, Woodlands. What's Max? I'm sorry, bro. Man, am I my brother's keeper? I mean, just, <laughs> I mean, Lord, I'm sitting here like, and you want me to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost after, after that? Minutes. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> all right. Hey, okay. Ask the question again, Max. Ask the question again. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Name. Uh, hey. Why you so many movies? Oh, my goodness. Lord Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. If you ain't watched New Jack, New Jack City just bring you out of depression. If you just yeah, ever need to go does. old school, you know, because because uh, everybody need a, a, a gunner man and Keisha in your life. You ain't got no Keisha and gunner man. <laughs> yeah, Keisha Lord was Jesus. the same, boy. I got a few yeah. Keishas on my team. Kay, you got a Keisha on your squad? I got a few of them. I got a few <laughs> of them. All right, good deal. Maxwell, man, I love you, bro. Thank you for being here, man. We are, how many live do we have, Sheree? 313. We had 313 live, Max, man. People from all over the country, man. I have bragged on you, bro, long before this show uh, because you have impressed me through the years, man. So what I say to you privately, bro, I can say publicly. Uh, you know how some cats go public and then start saying all this right. stuff. You're like, you ain't never said that to me. <laughs> you know, it's so, true. um, Man, we're happy. I don't know where Sheree went. I don't know where she went. Are we live still? Let me see. Let me see. Did we go? Did we go off? Yeah, I think we still there. Yes, yeah, yes. Right. Yeah. Are we still live? Okay. I guess Sheree having some technical issues. All right. Can y'all still hear us? I hear y'all. They still doing New York City. All right, we still here? Yep, okay, I guess Cherie's having some technical issues. We good, all right, good. Max, we're talking today, man, about the mind, man. We're talking yes. about get out your own head. Man, I'm going to release you. I know you're going to bless the people. And then, man, if you don't mind at the end, if we have any questions, man, we're going to we're gonna pose those questions to you. Absolutely. But, man, uh, have your way, bro. Maxwell Clark, y'all, uh, uh, Life Point Church, Woodlands, Houston, Texas area. Let's give him some faith room love. Clap those hands for him. Yeah. Come on, guys. 
Thank you all. Thank you all. You know, Nick was just telling everybody about uh, the, the challenges that our church has gone through over the last seven years. So we went through two major floods, COVID, which kept us. We still are in the process of reopening again. And so one of the things I had to learn and deal with on a personal level is how your mind likes to play tricks on you. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be the enemy. Sometimes it doesn't have to be another enemy. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a coworker. Sometimes the greatest enemy of yourself is yourself. Come on, man. Um, because we are, if you're doing right, our toughest critics. And so learning to deal with your own mind is a huge thing. And, and if you don't learn how to do that, you'll never develop and actually fulfill the things that Jesus has for us to fulfill. So I wanna actually give us a new way to think about how your mind works, okay? I wanna give you a new way to think about how your mind works. And so I wanted to, to look at two verses real quick and lay some, some context down and then we're gonna deal with that. So the first one is 2 Samuel 4.4. 4. So 2 Samuel 4.4 4. and it says this, now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was disabled in both feet. He was five years old and when the news of Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel, and his nurse picked him up and fled. But it happened that in her hurry to flee, he fell and could no longer walk. And mm. his name was Mephibosheth. So we, we here we have this beginning, the laying the groundwork for this person known as Mephibosheth. Now, if we go to 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9, and this was one of the ones that, that we said, actually, let's go back, excuse me, to verse 8, actually, right. and it says this. <clears throat> and he paid homage and said, what is your servant that you should show regard for a dead dog such as I? Come on, so sir. here we have a conversation going on between Mephibosheth and David. And Mephibosheth refers to himself as a, a dead dog. And so I, I wanted to begin to talk about that because that reminds me of a lot of people nowadays. There's a lot of people, sometimes we'll verbalize it, sometimes we won't, sometimes we'll only mutter it to ourselves, sometimes we may confide in a friend, but the truth is that many of us actually don't have a high self-regard for ourselves, okay? On, Especially when you've been through some things in your life that have changed the outcome of your life thus far. You look at Mephibosheth, look at him. He was the, the third in line to the throne, probably. He was one of those, those children. He was the son of Jonathan, who was the son of Saul. He was in a royal lineage, okay? Yeah. His life could have turned out a completely different way, but all of a sudden, he becomes a part of not the monarchy, he becomes a part of a generational curse. Hulk, sir. Okay? I want you to think about that. The first thing that happened was his grandfather, Saul, died. OK, so Saul, Saul, he was the he was the king. He died. Then what happens? Jonathan dies. And so now not only has he lost the male identities that would have helped to define the character that he was, but now in haste, the, the, the nurse is taking him, trying to get him to safety. And then guess what happens? He gets dropped. And when he gets dropped, his legs stop working. OK, I, I want you to think about that. Has anyone ever been dropped before? I know you've you've heard this illustration about being dropped, but have you ever been dropped? I know what it's like to be dropped. OK, I know what it's like when you're disregarded, when when you're disenfranchised, when people say they love you, but then they actually aren't really there for you. When somebody cheats on you, when somebody breaks your heart, when somebody talks about you behind your back, when all of those things begin to happen, it's a form of being dropped. Talk, Max. But those are just the, the, the light situations. What happens when drop gets down into your character? What happens when it becomes down into your soul? And now that you were dropped in an incident, but now you live a lifestyle of being dropped. Mm. Okay? Mm. You have decided to have a dropped character. You know, it, it amazes me that a person can be created by the most high God, yet they can view themselves as a dead dog. But the truth is that the mind can play tricks on us. Does that, does that make sense to you guys? Yes, sir. Come on, Doc. And so, so I'm looking at Mephibosheth and I understand it. I understand it from a personal level. I understand it that before I was born, the, the, the man who, who thought he had the audacity and the swag and the bravado to, to lay with my mother decided that when he found out she was pregnant with me, he said, guess what? This can't be mine. That's, wow. that's, I know what it's like to be dropped. Come on, An man. identity shaper. You know what, Nate? I don't know if I ever told you this, but when we were working in Cleveland, Come to find out down the hall from me, the person I was working next to come to realize that this person was my in-law through the father that I had never met. And she tried to create an introduction for us 
He keep, we finally got in contact on the phone. I am over 30 years old. And I say, sir, this is my mother. And guess what? In a drunken stupor, he says to me, you couldn't have been mine. Wow. Wow. Max, tell your story, bro. You know, it's one thing to be dropped at birth, but it's another thing when, when people drop you along the way of your journey. And it really shapes wow, who sir. you are. When pain shapes who you are, when regret shapes who you are. You know, you know what it's like to be dropped when you wake up in the bed with somebody that you didn't know before you got in the bed. And now all of a sudden they no longer value you and you feel dropped. You know what it's like when you when you made a mistake and you were in college, you were in school and you had things handed to you and you 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 messed up the opportunity. And now guess what? They say that you've got to be dropped. We are all a product of drops. Come on, it's sir. not just Mephibosheth, but we're all a mm. product of drops. Come on, Max. If you can say that you've never been dropped, then I can say that you've never lived. OK, because wow. if you've lived, you've been dropped. OK. So, so that's the reality. We're all in the same boat as Mephibosheth. So I, 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 we all can understand a little bit when you want to refer to yourself in a negative light, Come when on. you don't want to think of yourself in the highest esteem. But there's a problem with Mephibosheth's thinking, and Come it's on, shaped well. by that dropped living. And I want to give you a couple of things, and I'm going to try to explain how the mind works as we go through this. Is that okay? I'm going to try to do it pretty fast, though. I'm going to try to do it. So the first thing I want to give you guys is this, is that Mephibosheth misdiagnosed his own condition. Let mm. me say it again. Mephibosheth misdiagnosed his own condition. Talk what through. do I mean by that? He referred to himself as, as a dead dog. Why? Because of the condition of his feet, the condition of his legs. He was paraplegic. He could not get up on his own, function on his own, and do a lot of things on his own. He could not just get up and walk to the corner store. He could not just get up and walk to the mailbox. Guess what? He couldn't even get up and walk to the fridge. We know metaphorically what I'm saying. He There was no fridges back then, but he couldn't get up and do it for himself. He constantly had to have people do it for him. And so he felt lesser than because he was in a position where he had to have people do things for him. He devalued himself because of the things that he couldn't do that other people could do. But the problem for Mephibosheth was not the fact that his feet did not work. The real problem is that when Mephibosheth was dropped, his head stopped working. Come on. Okay. Let me, let me say that again. Say his, again. his feet might not have walked, but when he was dropped, it was his head that stopped working. How many of us, we have been told who Jesus Christ believes that we are, who he says that we are, who he declares that we are, who he died to make us, who he died, he died to redeem us. And now you're going to devalue yourself. Guess what? Mephibosheth was not post-Christ. He was pre-Christ. But here's the, the thing about that. Even being pre-Christ, he knew Yahweh. He knew Elohim. All right. He, he knew Adonai. He, he knew El Shaddai. He knew the God of all creation who said, let there be light. And there was light. He knew that God and he realized that that God made him and not only made him, but put him into the lineage of kings in the chosen people. Yet here he is referring to himself as a dead dog. Talk Max. Talk Max. He's referring to himself as a dead dog. Come on, sir. Because of his feet. Mm -hmm. But the problem is this. Your feet don't make up who you are. All they do is get you moving. Mm -hmm. Come on, sir. Your identity is not found in your physical being. I need to say that to a couple fellas nowadays because just because you think you've got something on you that's of decent size that does not make you a man. Your physical nature is not what defines you. It's oh, Jesus man. that defines you. Guess what? If you got a big Johnson but a little character, you're not a man. I'm just going to say it like that. I'm sorry. I, I, I just got to say it like that. Okay. Guess what? Because you can lay in the bed with somebody does not make you a man. OK, we, we got to get through this stuff and realize that, guess what? It's your spiritual character that defines you. And the problem for Mephibosheth was that he had a broken physical character. Now, this is where we're going to step away from this text, but we're going to bring it right back to it because I want to give you this. I want you to look at something because I want to talk about how the mind works and how Mephibosheth could have got to this point. Help us, so, bro. The first thing is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So we've, we've heard that many of us have heard. You trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But then Proverbs 4.23 says this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Now, here's the problem I have contextually. It doesn't say guard your head. It says guard your heart. Help us, Max. And the problem I'm having with reconciling that when I first started reading that was that the heart is nothing more than a muscular organ that works the same way that a pump does. And it circulates oxygenated blood around your body. Okay, okay. Well. It, it does not have <laughs> logic. It does not have reason. It does not have thoughts. In fact, <clears throat> what it does is controlled by the, the center computer of your body, which is what? Your brain. So how could he say, why would I need to guard my heart in order to avoid the, the, the issues of life? Here's yeah. the reason why, because in that, that Judaic culture, when they talked about the heart, what they were really talking about was an aspect of your mind. Come See, on. the mind is made up of two parts. The first part is the part that, that gives you knowledge. It's the part that gives you logic. It's the part that gives you reason. It's the part that gives you information. You know, and, and so that is the, the knowledge center that we normally refer to as the mind. Oh, but in man. the Jewish culture, what they would have meant is that when they said the heart, it was the polar opposite part of the mind. And, and I love the definition that I have seen of it. And, and I want to see if I can if I got that one for you. all But it basically talks about the fact that the mind is the place where wisdom and emotion are seated. OK, right. It, it's the place where wisdom and emotion are seated. So okay. the way that the mind works is that there's a logical side which takes in knowledge, but there's also an emotional side and that produces, and there's wisdom there, okay? So here comes the issue. When he's saying guard your heart, what he's really saying is guard the part of your mind where your emotions are. The part of, you see, when we say somebody is getting in their feelings, what we really mean is they're getting in their mind, okay? Because when you get into your feelings, your feelings have a place from which they come out of. And it is your heart, which is the heart side of your mind. The problem for many of us is that we don't understand how it works and we don't guard our hearts. So this is how it works. Y'all ready for me to get you to see? Come on. I want you to think about an island. OK, I want you to think about an island with me. I went to Florida Keys a couple of years ago. Right. Had a great time. I got I flew into Miami, got my rental car. And in order to get to to Key West. Come on, which man. was the island. I had to go over a land bridge that got me there. So watch this. The land bridge was not the island. Mm. It was just what led into the island. Yeah. See, the, 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 the heart is the, the, the fragile part of our mind. It is the island. The knowledge that we get is what leads into there. Once we take a certain thought process and knowledge and allow it to go into our brain, that becomes our wisdom, that becomes our truth, and that becomes what we use to define ourselves. So what you can't do is let everything come down the road to your heart. You have to vet the knowledge that you're letting in so that you don't allow that to become your wisdom. Because what you do in wisdom, see, here's the difference. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is what you know how to use. OK, so so what I'm actually going to use wow. is not simply knowledge. It's wisdom. That's why the Bible says knowledge puffs up. What does that look like? That looks like when you're trying to get into Key West and all the cars are backed up because you're trying to get in there because there's too much traffic on the, 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 the road that leads into the island. So nothing can move. See, the problem for us is that knowledge has puffed up. We don't know what to let in. We don't know what to do. And the problem for many of us is because guess what? The stuff that we're letting in is not coming from the proper source. Guess mm. what? You are Wikipedia your life away. Instead hold of on, taking. Man. Hold on. Say that again. Say that you, again. You now, are Wikipedia your life away. OK, if you don't know, anybody can come into Wikipedia and edit the results to put and define whatever they want to do. And what we do is, see, we, we, we grew up with, some of y'all remember World Book. See, I grew up with World Book and Encyclopedia Britannica, okay? Come so on, when bro. I was growing up, I had to go to the library, and I had to go to these vetted sources, and I had to know that they were reliable. But nowadays, people don't go to reliable sources. They just go to sources, okay? When you're getting your truth from TMZ, 
and world star and, and, and Facebook, when you're dumb enough to walk up a stack of unbalanced milk crates and break your neck, there's a problem with the truth that you're taking in. I, 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 and it's not, you know, the problem It's not just the kids because these kids came from somewhere. Come okay? on. It's not just the kids. Don't just blame the kids because guess what? The shows that are on now came from the mind of the people who were there before them. Lord have mercy, man. Lord. So here's, here's the reality from Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth had access as a child, as a Jewish child, to all of the scriptures, to all of the laws. Come on, he man. Could, he had to the, to the identity of God that God was willing to reveal to the people that were alive at that time. Because no, they didn't have the full scriptures, but guess what? They had what he said was adequate for them to have to know him in that time. Come on, but man. The, the problem that we have is this. He misdiagnosed his condition because he was saying that the problem with him was his feet. No, the problem with him was that he didn't have the right identity because he didn't have the mind of God because he was holding on to what the world said about him instead of what the scripture said about him. Wow. Come on, Max. Are you holding on to what the world has said about you? Because you made some mistakes in high school and you, you got a fast and loose identity. We, we didn't made some mistakes. But the problem is this. It's one thing to do when you're 16. But if you're still living by the same mentality and the same title that you were living by at 16, at 26 and 36 and 46 and 56, the, the, the problem is that something's wrong in your brain. Wow. And man. you need to rewrite the truth of your mind. By going to the absolute truth of the scriptures. Come on, man. Oh, that's good, Max. You have to. If your basis is not the scriptures, then you have a more serious problem than you realize. And this is a quote I made uh, earlier, and it, you hit this. Logic and reason minus the presence and person of God is only circumstantial fact. Okay? Let me say yeah. that again. He going he gonna to tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Rewind and say that again. Logic and reason minus the presence and person of God is only circumstantial fact. It means that it's only a fact in the circumstance that you're in, but the second that the circumstance changes, it's no longer a fact. That's called subjective truth. But when God gets involved with something, it becomes absolute truth. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely complete. It's absolutely right. It's absolutely holy. It's absolutely awesome. We got to stop taking subjective partial truth and get to the truth of God, because guess what? Guess what? Somebody used to call you a hoe. OK, but guess what? Jesus now says you are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people for his own possession. You are no longer defined by what people say because you have entered into covenant with the God of all creation who has redefined who you are because he says it's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives in you. OK, Maxwell, you no longer have that. Maxwell, so are you saying it's possible that we're letting our emotions and Come we're on. all over the place because and we're and and it's not absolute truth it's it, yep it's circumstantial fact man that, that's that's powerful to me because so many people can't go to that next level and it's not because they're dwelling on what's true it it's not even true but it's in mm -hmm. my head is that yes. what you're saying yes that, that and that's that's it because because you can't if you're defining yourself by worldly things, by worldly standards, man, that's good. First John tells us that this world will pass away. So you're defining yourself by the temporal instead of by the eternal. So you've only got a temporary partial definition of who you are. But oh, when man. you take the truth of God, you have an eternal identity that does not fade, that is uncorruptible, that is undefiled. It can't be stolen from you. It can't be taken from you. Just because somebody else says it isn't, God will validate it for you every time you come back to him. Wow, man. That's and, so good, bro. And, that, and, and that's the first thing. You got to have that truth. Don't misdiagnose your, kind, your condition. Stop blaming the fact that you didn't have a daddy. Oh, I'm, I'm talking to myself. Can I talk to myself for a minute? Matt, yeah. stop, stop blaming the fact that you didn't have a daddy. Uh, for everything that happened, because it got to a point in your life where you had a choice to make certain decisions. I'm just talking to myself. I don't want nobody else to be offended. I'm sorry, y'all. But, oh, but, but, but so I just talked to myself about that. 
You got to stop blaming everybody else in every situation that's happened, every mistake, and realize that, guess what? God has given me a clean slate. That's why the Bible says, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Come on. Come every on, Every morning I get new mercies. I get a new chance. So, so we got to do that. But the second thing that we see about Mephibosheth is that he misinterpreted his predicament. Okay? He misinterpreted his predicament. In that. saying, hey, look at that in verse 80. And he paid homage and said, what is your servant that I should show, that you should show regard for a dead dog such as I? Here he is talking about the fact that he's a dead dog. And the problem is that none of this really revolves around him. See, one of the things that happens when we get all messed up in the mind is that we become the center of everything that's going on. OK. Wow. And that means that everything we become the sun and everything is revolving around us. And so when something happens that it, it, it's about us, guess what? This had absolutely really nothing to do with Mephibosheth. OK, he mm -hmm. need to get out his own feelings and emotions about himself and realize that this had to do about God, not about him. Come on, man. What do I mean? He says this. David said nine one. And David said, is there still anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? This did you did you hear him say, is Mephibosheth still around that I can show him kindness? No, sir. He said, is there anyone uh, of Saul's home that I can show him kindness? Right. Then they go get Ziba and then they and then Ziba talks about Mephibosheth. This had to do with the fact that God wanted to use David to bless somebody. OK, he wanted to use David to do this amazing thing. Why? Maybe because it had to do with the fact that David was a man after God's own heart. And for years and generations after this, by David showing what it's like to bless somebody who's in a predicament that's less than him, it might de generate a, a, a legion of believers who will go out and bless people who are in predicaments that are lower than theirs, that are that are hurting, that are disenfranchised, that are broken. But guess what? Mephibosheth thought, well, stop downing yourself. See, this is this is gonna hurt right here. Can I, Come on, can I say start? it, bro? Say it. I'm gonna apologize to y'all right now. We talk about pride, and we often define pride as being too haughty. But the real definition of pride is not thinking about yourself as too big. It's about thinking about yourself too much. Ah. Uh, so, so when you down yourself, good that's pride. Gracious. And when you exalt yourself, Max, that's well, pride. okay, that, Max. that's the truth. You just think about you. God ain't God. God got a million trillion billion people that he's thinking about, and Max. he loves them all. He loves them all. You got to say that again, bro, it, it, because we have missed. We put pride in one box. Yep, come on. But you yeah. don't put pride in another box. There, it, it's. It's compartmentalizing pride. Now, help me again. It's so pride is not only thinking about yourself as too high, but thinking about yourself as too low, because the common denominator between the two is that you're thinking about yourself too much, too much. Come on. Y'all better hear this. Oh, my God. Too uh, much. I, I started to say, boy, y'all better hear this. Say something, man. You better please, sir. Please, sir. Please. Now, I, I want to reach in there, let, snatch them headphones off your head. <laughs> mm. Bruh. What's up, Pastor Gad? Great. Good to see you, man. Good grace and goodness. That's that's the hurtful point right there. Because a lot of us will say, I won't exalt myself, therefore I don't struggle with pride. God. And so we never deal with the sin and allow the truth of God to be the antidote for the problem. Because guess what? Again, we've misdiagnosed. We've misinterpreted. And the truth is this. If you're spending your time talking to God, fellowshipping with God, in communion with God, then something begins to happen along the way. You may begin to start to pray about your issues, but somewhere along the line, things begin to transform and you can't help about thinking about God. See, if you pray for a while, you can't just stay on yourself. At some point when you're really in prayer, your prayer transitions to the focus because what prayer is doing is it's realigning you. And whenever you're realigned with God, God is the center. Okay? He's oh. the center. Everything revolves around him. 
So, so this tells us of a person who's who's thinking about themselves too much. He's in his feelings. See, that's the modern day term for getting in your own mind nowadays. It's this person is in their feelings. So when we say you're in your feelings, we mean you're in your mind. You're getting in your own way. You're allowing your feelings to cloud your judgment. You're allowing your feelings to drive your decisions. You're allowing your feelings to cause you to alienate people and be angry with people or not forgive people and do the things that will destroy relationships and opportunities for you rather than build them. Lord, have mercy. All because we don't want to deal with the pride that's at the center. Good gracious goodness, boy. Maxwell Clark. Keep go, go ahead, so, Doc. Go so, ahead. So, that's the second one. I got one more for y'all. Come on, Doc. This is the one that gets me the most. Mephibosheth misrepresented God. Let me say it again. He misrepresented God. So, so in verse, and he said, and he paid homage. Well, what is your servant that you should so regard for a dead dog such as I? Here he's talking to David, but we have to remember that David was known as the vessel of God, okay? David was one of the few kings who also had a priestly type of designation, okay? David represented God. In everything that he do, the country would sing the psalms that David wrote, okay? They would pray the prayers that David wrote. They would worship when David worshiped. They would repent when David repented, okay? When David is, when he's come to him to bless him, he's doing this on behalf of the, the favor of God that is coming through David, not from David. Wow. Okay? Man. That oh. favor is, is coming from God through David. Right. So here's the problem. Well, if you're saying, well, how could God, you know, really what you're saying is how could God bless a dead dog? Do you think that you're that bad that you're beyond the saving grace, the loving compassion, the mercy of God Almighty? Do you have the right to redefine yourself so much that you're saying that my brokenness is beyond God's healing ability? Good gracious goodness, Max. Free somebody, bro. Free think about somebody. This. somebody. You are wrong and you are in sin when you redefine yourself and call yourself anything other than what God has called you. Come on, Maxwell. And we talked about how, how thinking of yourself too much, too little was pride. Why? Because what the real pride is the fact that you've just redefined yourself as God and said, I have the right to define and declare what is. You don't have the right to define and declare what is. God has the right to define and declare what is. Why? Because God is the creator of things. It is the biblical principle that whenever someone creates something, they name it. In the Bible, when they have children, the parents name it and they give it a name, right? Well, guess what? God created you. He has the right to define you. The problem for many of us is that we have been re redefining ourselves for too long that we all confused. I hate to say this like this because I need to make sure that what I'm about to say right now, people understand. I love all people. I love all people. Not because I'm perfect, but because the Holy Spirit is in me and he's going to break me of myself and cause me to love people. But I got to be honest and say this. When you decide that you were born a man and you want to be live as a woman, you're redefining. And what you've just done is you said, I'm going to usurp the authority of the father and his ability and right to designate who I am and what I am. Mm. OK. When we, when we when we do things like that, anything in which we are redefining, if we guess what, when you're a racist, whether black, white, Latino, Asian, whatever, and you're saying that you're better or you're discriminating against a people group. Do you not realize that your sin of pride is really trying to say that I am greater than God because I have the right to define what these people are? You can't define people. God, that's God's job. That's God's job. And Listen, you can't think about that. Go ahead. No, man. I'm, I'm shouting back with you, bro. If, if you define anything that you don't have the right to define, then you're trying to usurp God's authority, his sovereignty. Well, here's the problem. Aren't you something? Do you have the right to define yourself? Because when you define yourself, you're saying, I am my own God. And guess what that needs? That needs repentance. That needs God. I'm coming to you. 
And I'm saying to you that guess what? I may not have understood the magnitude of my actions. I may not have understood that, that the actions I was doing were actually a declaration and attack on your sovereignty. But I can thank you today in Jesus Christ's name that you can forgive me because when you see me, you see the righteous blood of Jesus poured over me, covering me and identifying me to you as righteous. Wow. Guess what? Today, the first thing some of us need to do who've been looking down on ourselves is repent and say, God, I'm sorry for accepting an any identity other than the identity that you've given me. And repentance is not just saying I'm sorry, but isn't it turning the opposite direction? So what that means is that from today on, God, I've got to walk with my head up instead of my head down. Today, God, I've got to walk with the identity that I'm more than an overcomer. I've got to walk with the identity that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have to walk with the identity that I am a holy nation. I've got to walk with the identity that I'm a royal priesthood. I've got to walk with the identity that I'm a people for your possession. That means that my life's not my own, it's yours. See, today is the day of repentance because we don't know when it's all over. Wow, man. Wow. This is the day. You know, and, and this is this is this should bring some some meaning to the saying we used to say growing up at church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because today is a day that we begin an opportunity to repent, turn back to the master, and walk in holiness and righteousness. Stop playing with yourself. Here's the truth. They got so many self-help books out here, but self-help can't help you enough. You can't take tangible physical problems, right? And use them or, or, or solutions and try to use them to solve spiritual problems. You got to take spiritual solutions and spiritual wisdom and the spirit of God to unlock and help you to solve the spiritual issues of your life. So you can keep playing games and I ain't got no problem with Dr. Phil, Ayanla or anybody else, but I know a Jesus. Come on, bro. And Jesus has all the solutions and all the answers. He, mm. guess what? He wrote the test. He says, guess what? I will give you some private study sessions with me. You can sit down and we can stay together all night. And if you just tarry with me in prayer, then guess what? We can make it all right. That's that's the truth of what it is, y'all, is that we have to learn to tarry with God again. Guess what? If your Bible doesn't have bent pages, then you're not tarrying enough with God. If your knees don't pop when you get down to the floor because you're so used to putting your face into the mattress to pray, then you're not tarrying with him enough. And therefore, what you're doing is you're inundating yourself with life and stuff and shows and social media and everything else more than you're introducing the truth of the all encompassing, all knowing, sovereign God of all creation into you. Maxwell Clark. Got to change. Maxwell Clark. Some things only come out through prayer and fasting. Maxwell, let me say this, man. Sheree. Y'all going to unmute. How, how many do we have live right now, Elder? 377. Listen, y'all. My head, my head is spinning right now, man. You dropped so much so yes. fast. So much. So much. Maxwell, what if, how do you guard? Because sometimes y'all put your questions in. Put your questions in. Any questions on, on this? A lot of times, man, it's not... It's not us. It's not the individual. It's the people. It's people who like to remind us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not me calling myself a dead dog. It's the people calling me a dead. How do you start that mind? Do, what do you say to the person who's dealing with people around them? Because I think we give too much attention to what people are saying about us. Come on. How do you help? free us from that man people talk gossip what they think about us let this mind be in you which is yours in christ jesus okay how do we let the mind of christ become our mind and i think psalm says it like this i have hidden your word in my heart that i might not sin against you so here's the problem we can all quote john three sixteen. okay 
-hmm. But can we quote Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, so can we quote some other things Come on, that, come on. that speak to the areas of our sensitivity and our brokenness? Because what it is, is it's God coming in and taking supernatural stucco and not just, you know, not just trying to do a light patch, but he's rebuilding it. When we take the word and we begin to memorize the scriptures, then guess what? What we do is we are every time we're doing that, we are getting new building materials deposit into us so that God can do the work in us. The problem is that this generation is also considered the most biblically illiterate generation in all of history. So that means that guess what? It's just like it was last year in the middle of COVID when guess what? When all the prices went up and there was a shortage of materials. See, th this is why you have the, the day and age of, of, quote, superstar pastors, because it's only a few people that are actually putting the word in them. And other people are like, guess what? I don't even need to do that. I'm just going to get it from them. Well, guess what? They're going to live their life and they're going to be righteous and they're going to fulfill the purposes of God. And here you are going to be sitting in your room, shaking and wondering why your heart is breaking. You have to do the work for yourself. Jesus said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, so the reality is this, is that you got to get back into something we call the spiritual disciplines. Yeah. The actual, see, Tim Duncan, basketball player, uh, was, was they call it, they joke and call him, Shaq called him the big fundamental. But Tim Duncan never got obsolete because he understood that the fundamentals could carry him when his own natural abilities were, were diminishing. He understood the right principles to keep. So that even when his knees were getting tired, he could keep going. The problem for us is most of us don't have any spiritual disciplines. We don't pray consistently and have a prayer plan. We don't fast consistently. We don't have a Bible intake plan. We don't have a scripture memorization plan. Y'all don't really want me to go there. You don't have biblical accountability. Because guess what? If you got the right people talking into you and they're speaking holiness and the righteousness and the word of God into you, I'm sorry, but a cup can only be filled up so much. So if I've got the right people pouring the right things into me and filling me up, there's no room for the garbage. Wow. Wow. Here's a question, Max. Here's a question. How do you communicate to someone that they need to be removed from your journey? How do you tell somebody? Time's up, bro. Time's up, sis. Time's up, homie. It's me. It's, it's, yeah. it's I, I think the problem is right there. I'm going to be more worried about what God has said for me to do than worried about the feelings of somebody else. So my reality is this. I, you may not get a call. You just may stop getting a call. If it's going to take that from me to keep my sanctification, then, bruh, guess what? You may call and they say this call is now blocked. I mean, let's let's be for real. We don't have to play. This journey is about God. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to play with you when it comes to my spiritual matters. So guess what? I mean, if you're nice like that, great. But some of us, we can't be nice like that because we know that there is weakness in us. We know that we always want to let somebody back in. We know that they know how to say the right words, the right things. And then guess what? Sometimes you got to go cold turkey. How can we say that about somebody kicking the sin of cigarettes, but then we don't say that about kicking the sin of someone else? Sometimes you just got to let go. <laughs> so you said sometimes people are the sin. Yeah, sometimes people are the sin. Don't bring your dirty baggage to my house and expect that I'm going to wash your clothes. Hey. Wow. Maxwell. Do I, I have, have another question? I have a question. I have a question. Have okay. So, so you, you, you gave the illustration of the, uh, the, the bridge yes. that leads from Florida to the Keys, right? Mm -hmm. and, and if the traffic is backed up, you know, you just stuck there in traffic. And, and so, you know, uh, that, that's being puffed up yeah. uh, with, with, with knowledge. What do you say to a person that, that has so much backed up traffic, but now they realize they need to be able to let the right thing in? How do they declutter the bridge? You know, because that, that, that bridge going to the keys is narrow. Yes, sir. So, so how do they declutter the bridge to be able to let the right stuff across? This is going to hurt because, and I'm going to say this especially for African Americans, many African Americans, which I'm one of, do not know how to do this next principle. And this is part of our problem. And I'm just going to be honest and say it. I'm pretty blunt as it is. 
Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then the next part, he says, and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. Yeah. That is the practice of discipleship. The practice of discipleship is learning how to take what we know and turn it into something we can use and what to, people can look at us, holy, godly people that God will put around us to help us see that, guess what? This is the excess baggage that you need to let go of. And this is the usable information that you have. They, they help us reconcile the scriptures with what we know and what can't be reconcil reconciled has to go. So what we need to do is to submit ourselves to discipleship. And I would define that as the, the, the selfless surrender of self to someone else and, 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 and their training. So we got to stop thinking we all that. God didn't bring us into biblical community to figure everything out by ourselves. God wants you to have a surrendered heart where you submit yourself under the covering of someone. That person, you are giving the right to speak to you, to identify the things that are not like you and to begin to help you pick those things and throw the, the excess away. And, and most of us, I'll be honest, in the African-American church, real discipleship, which is doing life together with people, often doesn't exist because we just go to church. Come on. Okay. That's, that's, so that's not the Jewish culture. That's not the biblical culture. They lived in community. They called out sin together in community. Guess what? That's why when there was a wedding, it was a communal celebration because we watched you grow. We watched you develop. Guess what? We saw you fall and we saw you get back up. And yeah. now we see you stepping into something. We no longer have a, a legacy of guess what? I'm going to lay hands on you. And we are going to commission, we are going to acknowledge that, guess what? You are being developed. You've been developed. You know, and that was the hardest thing for me because not having a father, I didn't know the impact that someone else could really have. You know what? So there, there's a guy, Pastor Kevin James, uh, Minister Nate, and I used to work for him. And um, Nate, I don't know if I ever told you this, but Pastor Kevin gave me the greatest discipleship moment I ever had in my life. Wow. I was over a, a, a ministry and I'm sitting there and he's asking me why something happened. And I'm like, well, and, and did it. And he said, let me teach you something right now. He said, I'm the pastor of this church and I accept responsibility for things that I sometimes don't even know about. Because this is what it means to have responsibility. Mm. Mm. If he had not said those words to me, I would have never learned to take more than I could take wow, man. to help build up something greater than myself. Wow, bro. And so right. if he had done that, I couldn't have been, I wouldn't have made it through seven years because I'd have been blaming everybody else and alienated <laughs> everybody else. So when the times were getting hard, yeah, we had situations, but guess what? This was the hand that God dealt to me. And he wants me to grow through this time and to lead through this time so that he can get the glory in this time. And if he hadn't taught me that, I couldn't be a pastor. Who do you have in your life that you allow the right to speak into you? That's good. That's good. Unfiltered. Let's let's be free. Unfiltered. Everybody needs it. You gotta have it. Wow. Jesus That's commanded it. Y'all, that's good. We'll do one more question. Man, this is everybody, Max, when it get quiet like this, bro, we ain't even, listen, bro, it is, I hear crickets right now. You know why? Because people are taking it in. They're taking it in. I pray. Here's, here's a question, guys, and we're going we're gonna to bless Pastor Max. In fact, Pastor Cad, we're, when is September the 1st? Uh, we, we're in eight. We're in eight now, so we're sowing eight all month. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. We're gonna I'm gonna cash gonna lift up the opportunity for you us to sow today. Let me say this. Um um Kim's question. Uh can you help someone dealing with anger after losing a child to violence and wanting to revenge their death? How can they grieve, mourn, and have strength to go on? How do you how do you help somebody there? So it's ironic you said that. So when I moved to Houston. Um, one of the reasons I moved here, my aunt had been here for 18 years. She had uh, gotten married and they had stepsons. And I remember getting the call that uh, the stepson was murdered. 
Okay. Um, this is at the beginning of our church plant. And uh, I saw the impact, two different impacts. And justifiably so, one was his father and one was my, was my aunt. I think the difference is a person that's actually hmm. willing to get counsel. I mean, I, I've got to say it, I can't come up with something extra profound. Yeah. yeah. But when you've been in something that hurts, that pains you deeply to your core, like you've never felt, are you humble enough to say that I can't figure my, my way through this situation alone? My God. Um, you know, I, I can't do it by myself. Come on. And man. the thing is, can you help someone dealing with anger? I don't know because I don't know the person's skill set. I don't know the level of their spiritual depth, their scripture intake, if they know how to use the scriptures as a, as a pharmacist and not as an army soldier. Um, but maybe what you can do is find and help unite them and connect them with someone who God is uniquely gifted and wired to help people in those crisis situations. The big problem is often that we want to be the heroes, but sometimes the greatest heroes are the ones that we never knew. That's good, bro. Drop the mic, Max. Bam. All right, y'all, listen. Cherie, then I tell y'all, he's just that mind. He's just brilliant. I like yeah. it. I like it. Good stuff. Uh, man, thank you for being who you are, man. I'm honored to know you, sir. You know, I'm always here for you, man. Uh, forever here for you, bro. And uh, you're not in this journey alone. So um, I'll be back to Houston real soon, man, to hang out. Yeah, what's, that spot, what's that spot you took me to when I was there? Man, which one? Because uh, we, we tried to go to one and they, they were closed down. Uh, the New Orleans spot. The soul, the, oh, Shalecki's. Yes, Shalecki's New Orleans Seafood. When any of y'all come down, we're going to take y'all there. Shalecki's. Shalecki's. Right. How can they follow amazing. your ministry, man? How can they connect with Maxwell Clark, man? They can connect with me on Facebook um, through LifePoint Church. Um, and then on Instagram, I actually have a personal Instagram at Past, it's at uh, or just Pastor Max with two X's. So P A S T O R M A X X. Um, and so that's the greatest way to do that. Uh, we're going to have new content and stuff coming up, new teachings. And uh, you can also follow us also on YouTube at LifePoint Spring. And actually, I think that's probably the best place if you want to see the content that we have, because we've probably got over 500 videos on there, of different teachings and different things that we've been able to do um, that can be utilized for by people for whatever needs that they may have. So we, we, we love to bless people like that. Amen. Can I just say this? Y'all have Kierney created such a beautiful platform and I am so proud of what you guys are doing. Um, it's organic. And one of the things that happened when I went to Cuba and as I get out of here, but it just says this is that I learned that when people are willing to do something simply for the glory of God, yeah. God gives a supernatural abounding blessing. And what you're seeing is that supernatural abounding blessing that wow. God is putting on y'all. And we know that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what the Lord has in store. Yeah. Man, we receive that, man. Thank you so much. Listen, guys, let's put up how we could be a blessing. And y'all, we're going to allow you to sow. People, y'all don't inbox us about you know, you sow what you sow. You don't have to inbox me or Sheree. You, when you want to sow, you sow. I mean, y'all feel me, Kat? You want to tell everybody what we what? Where did these funds go, man? What, tell yeah. them. These these funds are used to be, be a blessing to other people, to be a blessing mm -hmm. to uh, the men and women of God who come on here and share with us, yeah. and also to be a blessing to the people who come into the faith role. Uh, and it's not about how much you have to give, or even when you give it. It's the, you have the the uh, cash tag, the faith room one. You can give at any point as God leads you to, even if it's a dollar, even if it's two dollars, it doesn't matter. Now we, we put out there that since we're in the month of August that you can give anything with an eight in it. That's just an appeal, but it doesn't mean that you have to, if you want to give more, if you want to give less, Come on. It's, That's right. it's, it's what you have to give. The Bible says man gives according to what he has, not what he does not have. And so if you don't have $8, if you have a dollar, then you can give that. 
and Y'all it's appreciated, it's accepted. And that dollar may be just as much as somebody who has a million dollars, but only gives a hundred. So, so we want you to give as God leads you to, so that we can be a blessing to others. Right. And tomorrow we're going to have a blessing. We'll, we'll, you know, outreach. So we're going to add the gas or something we're going to do tomorrow. Daycare. We've been, we've been blessing people's, you know, just, I mean, God is glorified. I'll say that. And to know that we are helping people survive in this season, live in this season. Y'all, I go to bed at night knowing with a good conscience, knowing that though I'm imperfect, I'm trying to do the right thing. I can say that for Elder Sharif, Pastor Cab, Pastor Oris, uh, integrity, man. And that's what we're trying to walk in. Uh, that's a word you don't hear a lot. Uh, but we try to walk in it and that's what we're going to always do and there's accountability in this room and that's what we want to do so i want to say that because so many people use platforms elder for different reasons absolutely absolutely and it breaks my heart i'm tired of it and so it's just time and too many people are hurting too many people are on the bridge too many people need hope to be you know, we come in here and laugh. Y'all say, why y'all? Because laughter is a medicine. We, we, if we always uptight, some, we gonna lose it. We have to laugh sometimes. So we try not to be deep. We try to let you know you could be saved and ordinary. You could be saved and have fun. Mm-hmm. I'll say this, you could be saved and play spade and domino. Absolutely. Bones, baby. Uh, uno. uno. Don't leave me out. Uno. <sighs> Marilyn, Marilyn Jones. She want to play some Uno with you. Marilyn, one of my partners. Marilyn, can you see Come Marilyn? On, Marilyn. Marilyn, a spades player. Marilyn ain't getting down with no Uno. Well, somebody going to teach me when we get to Vegas. Somebody going to teach me how to play spades. Wow. Y'all want to talk about me, but don't nobody want to help. Howard Robinson said this. Let me get Amber said this was my first time. And I really enjoyed the teaching and the interaction between everyone. God bless you all. Thank you, Amber. Amber. We're so Thank glad you came. Yes. Howard Robinson said somebody tagged him. David Turner tagged him. And he said, this is one of the best teachings. This is one of the most awesome teachings I've heard in a long time. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. God bless you. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Y'all, I love you. We're going to close in prayer. Maxwell, before you leave, give us a one-liner. We do what we call um, charge for mm-hmm. the day. Give us a one-liner to take with us today. Nothing long, but just a one-liner we can put on our Facebook page and hashtag it to Facebook. I probably would re-give you with one I gave earlier just because I think it, it, it hits something. Logic and reason minus the presence and person of God is only circumstantial fact. <laughs> I did, and you know, I, I gotta type this. Man, slow, man. Okay, man, Lo- <laughs> logic and reason. Uh huh. Minus the presence and person of God. Presence. Uh huh. Is only circumstantial fact. Man. Mm-hmm. Y'all get that in on your page. Yeah, and I want to say to everybody who put those prayer requests out there, we're going to we're going to pray uh, for those things. Um, Let me make sure I spend something spiritual. <laughs> Man, so Lady Rose Brenda. asked her to pray for her her niece, uh, Fifi. Asked her to pray for the person that she asked a question on behalf of the father, um, that that God will heal his heart. Uh, as you know, he's he's trying to move through that grief. Through that. Mm-hmm. So, amen. Amen. Y'all, let's pray right now. Max, will you close us in prayer? In Faith Room, tomorrow is a Q&A Friday. Uh, I'm working on our guests tomorrow. It's a Q&A Friday. So all Friday, we're going to be taking your questions. Any questions you have on the mind, inbox us. Let us know your questions so that we could go ahead and have them already uploaded. 
but I'm going to have a guest in. We're going to do a Q&A Friday. Uh, but we're going to bless Pastor Maxwell if you feel so led to do so. I've already sown. That's what I was just doing. I've already sown into the faith room. And I'm going to sow a personal seed on my own. Uh, but I want to say, everybody, have a great day, man. Get out your own man. And let's move forward in God. Man, pray for us, bro. Abba, Father, Daddy, we thank you that we are defined by you. Thank you. Because your love pursued us through 42 generations to a cross. And your sacrifice was so complete that it bought us back. So, God, we thank you today. We praise you today and we worship you today. Yes. God, I pray that we would surrender ourselves to you today in a deeper, just more powerful way than we've done any other day. I pray that we would allow you to redefine our purpose, uh, redefine our identity and use us for your glory yes. that you might be able to expand the guest list to heaven. So, God, would you keep us keep us in these times of covid? Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. Keep us strong. Keep us vigilant. Keep the gospel on the front of our lips and God in everything. Exalt yourself and get the glory. Yes. I pray you bless the faith room continually increasingly above and beyond even what they've been blessed so far. And uh, it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. You muted, Nate. My bad. I got you. Dr. Rich Miller, love you. I'm going to call you today too, man. Um, but everybody, love you. Maxwell Clark, go follow him. Amazing gift. We are the faith room, Pastor Cad. Real people. Real problems. Real concern. But we're getting... Real solutions. Y'all take care. Signing off. Peace.